Um, so yeah, this this can be understood as a as a continuation, more focus on the on the implementation side of the things, and, and keeping in mind that it's also a technical. So I'm a technical guy. I'm providing a, a, a technical presentation. But let, let to put some context. Um, uh, the COVID nineteen situation and and how uh, we see this. Uh, uh, in, in terms of the impact on, on the automation and digitalization plans. Uh, so well, to start with, I think that uh, the situation we are going through, which uh, in Malaysia, is, I'm, I'm glad to hear that is uh, more or less ending, but in many other parts in the world where we have terminals is still ongoing and, uh, and, very, and the situation is not good. But let's say that the COVID-19 is really uh, forcing uh, us to rethink on how we operate terminals, but also how we manage uh, those uh, those terminals, right? Uh, my view is, of course, the centralized view from the headquarter here in Geneva. Um, certainly the sense of urgency to move uh, forward with digitalization and automation with these days, they are coming really hand in hand. Uh, before it was not in that way. Um, it's being empowered and it's helping also the alignment across the industry. But uh, we need to, to realize also that we, we face during this period uh, challenges and constraints on being more dependent from the technology, both for running uh, terminals, but also for implementing terminals, as uh, the two uh, greenfields uh, projects that we have in Israel and Italy. Um, we still need to be aware about uh, what is constraining us to realize automation potential. Um, personally, I believe that digitalization will help a lot on uh, standardizing automation and, and, and creating a digital core foundation on top of what we can put automation or artificial intelligence or anything else. But uh, my presentation is going to really focus on system integration, which is being a, a big constraint for us, the terminal operators, and uh, as part of that, the, the, the lack of standardization in, in the industry. Let me stop the video because I am having some, yeah, problems, so. Okay, so okay, so the the three areas I am going to focus on for uh, system integration challenges, being the system, the whole terminal, are the the solution framework and the challenge the challenges around uh, the risk of integration um, and. Finally, uh, last but not least, the, the workforce boundaries we have uh, right now in this industry. Uh, starting with the first one, uh, I think that uh, the challenges we have uh, uh, from design to, to opening the terminal to go live uh, are really on, on the lack of consistency uh, on the connection across the terminal design, terminal development, terminal deployment process. Those processes are very disconnected. Uh, the different engineering competences like with equipment, IT, civil, operation technology, so on, has to be managed as a whole. And we are uh, having constraint on that. Um, because at the end of the day, the, the design is really uh, producing the output of a terminal solution that we need to implement. But later, we need to plan that project and we need to procure those solutions and put it all together. So I still. The, the responsibility of making that uh, consistent and holistic is really on the terminal operator without uh, proper support from the, from the technology landscape, but also the suppliers. Uh, then getting into the suppliers, uh, so far we have uh, limited understanding regarding the operational and organizational aspects from them. Basically, they deliver the technology or the equipment but, uh, is or work to integrate that, and we really need the suppliers to understand how operation organization, um, the support from maintenance, the support from IT has to be articulated. It's very important that their systems and the integration of those is supporting how we organize the terminal. Then uh, it's very difficult to find uh, a solution that is complete, end-to-end, end-to-end, key to gates. This is not existing, at least uh, as far as I know in the, in the, in the industry, so we, we need to, we need to purchase different uh, components from different suppliers and we need again to, to integrate those. But also we need flexibility in terms of selecting a gate system from one uh, supplies or the other and, and the implementation and the integration not being dramatic, dramatically different, right? And the, the last one, 
the last one on this one is um, the lack of uh, industry standards. Uh, to leverage those standards at design, uh, but also later at implementation. On that, uh, there are some initiatives that are trying to, to drive standardization in, in, for automation, uh, but uh, they are not effective so far. Uh, they are not focusing on, let's say, solving the specific challenges we have. Uh, today, of course, the, the marketing hype is on artificial intelligence and big data and so on, but we still have very basic uh, uh, problems for connecting one system to another. Then uh, getting into that uh, integration risk, uh, the challenges are that, uh, well, the, the terminal ecosystem we have uh, is very complex, as I put in my drawing. So you have uh, the terminal operating system and you have uh, more and more important equipment control systems. So when, when you implement uh, automation, equipment control system is becoming as relevant and more expensive than the TOS, uh, meaning that is a sophisticated piece of software that uh, has a, a very important role in the organization and in managing operations and the exaction handling on those. But also all the satellite systems, like uh, on for community system, the, the EDI itself, the gate operating system, vehicle booking system, all these very diverse acronyms has to be connected. And um, it's also, um, very important that they have to create a data system of records. So today we have in the terminal seven, eight, ten different reporting system with different databases without a single source of truth. So that's one of the challenges, the complexity on this picture. But also uh, nobody is taking the system integrator role. We are the system integrators without being uh, technologists. Okay, so we are uh, getting more and more sophisticated in terms of having technical capabilities, but we don't have suppliers that provide an end-to-end -end solution and a chunky solution, right? That, that's something missing. Uh, then in terms of the scope, uh, we discover requirements, uh, new requirements for localization, for example, of the solution, but also integration requirements very late. So normally the, the scope of requirements uh, discoveries are very are many and very late. And this is impacting, of course, the, the solution, but also the, the readiness of the solution for go live. Uh, the third one is more on testing. So the quality assurance processes, especially at software level, and they are too technical. Okay, so we need a specialized uh, partners or suppliers to do that. And still it's too too technical, too 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 much in the engineering side. So let's say that, for example, the usability, so user experience, a control room is very difficult to validate. And finally, uh, we really want uh, to, to get to partner in performance with suppliers. So you are not just delivering a crane or, or you are just not delivering a system. You are partnering with us uh, to get to KPIs that we need to accomplish uh, together. And then the, the last one is, uh, is really on the, on the people uh, side of the things. So, uh, so far uh, we have, uh, with automation and digitalization, we, we expect to simplify organizations, but uh, at the same time, organizations are, are becoming more sophisticated because we need uh, new capabilities. So far we have, uh, we have operators and that's the triangle, but really the workforce and uh, meaning the labor, but also the outsourcing and so on, we are uh, no forward thinking on digitalization or automation. So it's been very difficult in every single part of the world. Uh, we have um, the, the, the main barriers that uh, we are going to face are organizational, okay? Um, for automation, it is being clear but for digitalization and then even more for artificial intelligence or anything else that we are thinking about in the future. A big part, big responsible for that is that the data is still in silos, as I mentioned before, and the data is not the standard, not the structure. So we cannot provide sense to the data or it's been very difficult to provide sense to the data across the different systems that I mentioned before. And finally, um, uh, I think that it is clear that uh, um, the, the system will drive and the workflow will assist, but today is in the other way around and uh, the human brain will, will become even more important and even more necessary. So we better think on the workforce boundaries that we have today and how to articulate the organization for the terminal. And then uh, kind of conclusions. 
for us, uh, automation can be only implemented on top of a operational excellent platform. That means digitizing processes, okay, to have some kind of operational backbone. The terminal implementation needs uh, a much more integrated and cross-functional uh, approach to connect all those engineering scenes, so civil equipment, IT automation, etc. And then um, the, that integrated operational and te technical capability is uh, is uh, is very necessary, but uh, we have serious challenges to to implement projects uh, because we are not finding standardized solutions. But uh, to leave a positive message, I think that the next wave of terminal will implement digitalization and automation hand in hand uh, to truly connect processes, tools, data, and workforce. And uh, it is clear to me that uh, yeah, we are uh, basically automation is the present, not anymore the future. But uh, we need to make it easier, uh, more reliable, and um, hopefully more repeatable from from one project to another. So that's my that's my presentation. Thank you again for for inviting me to, to this interesting panel.